with Eternal Radio, sounds to energize your faith. Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell. In these programs, we'll hear true supernatural accounts from those who have tried various spiritualities. Today's guest is Nathan Colella, an ex-New Ager, and Nathan has written a free book which you can download, and he also has his testimony on YouTube. Hi Nathan, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, thank you for coming on the show today. Welcome. Really appreciate it. And could we start off by, could you just tell us a little of your family background? Did any of your family have experience of the new age or the old cult? Um, I, I don't think so, no. Um, my family um, I come from a Catholic background, but uh, a lot of them have had experiences with uh, ghosts and demons, um, but haven't really known what's going on. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not really sure what they're into or anything, but I, I definitely know a lot of my family have had experiences with the supernatural. Yeah. Uh, and in, in your um, testimony on YouTube, you mentioned, was it your dad who had a few out-of-body experiences? Yeah, he, he had told me he had, he tried it once. He tried it for a while and it never worked. And then uh, he kind of gave up and that happened, which um, I had seen an out-of-body experience uh, program on TV. And after I watched that, um, I then asked him about it because I was researching online and he told me about his experience. So then um, I thought, well, if anyone can do it, I want to do it because I want to prove to myself that um, the other realm is real. So, um, you know, I went through a process of uh, reading as much as I could on it and uh, wanted to try it for myself so I could finally get some proof of something I could do to experience the supernatural. Yeah. And we'll go into that more more deeply soon. But could you start by telling us when, at what age did you start to have supernatural experiences? Was it quite young? And, and what happened? Yeah, I'd always had some really weird experiences through my childhood. Um, seeing myself do things while I was out of body, seeing myself um, have accidents. Um, and I would be outside of myself looking at myself doing it. Um, then when I was about eight, eight or nine, I used to get ghost stories out of the libraries, and that's all I'd read is just ghost stories. And then when I was about 10 or so, I stayed at my auntie's house, and um, uh, that's where I f first encountered my first ghostly experience when I was trying to get to sleep, and I thought um, the cat had come and jumped and sat on my legs, but... Um, I went to like go shoot it off, and then I looked, and there was nothing there, but I couldn't move my legs. Um, that really freaked me out. So then I just like put my head under the covers and hoped it'd go away. Yeah, so that was like a kind of paralysis then. Yeah. Yeah, that's really common, isn't it? I used to get that as well when I was into New Age and things. Yeah, well, I, I didn't really know much about anything about New Age then. I just knew... The ghost existed, and that's when I first encountered one, because uh, my cousin who lived there used to experience uh, ghosts all the time, you see, uh -huh. and I didn't know that until I told him about uh, what I'd experienced. And that's really young, eight or nine, isn't it? Yeah. And so what kind of things happened after that? Um, not much, really. I, I just continued to, to read about ghost stories, and then uh, finally I got into, like, reading about aliens and Roswell and such. And you get quite interested in aliens and UFOs? Yeah, well, I, I don't know why, but I just had this thirst for knowledge about the supernatural. Like, um, it was a knowledge that I couldn't quench. I just wanted, I just needed more and more, and I needed to find the answers to this life because I just had all these really deep questions that no one could answer. And I don't know, just, I, I just tried to read as much as I could. Yeah, and then 
did you have the desire to to contact aliens yourself? Um, yeah, but that didn't come until later on. Okay, so so what did you get into next? How how did things progress from there? <clears throat> well, you know, just get caught up in life and school and stuff, and then uh, finally, when I I had work experience, that's when I started getting into like researching our body experiences as um. And then when I first had the out-of-body experience, I was about 16 at the time. And um, I, I had tried for like two hours in the night time. I'd been reading about it all day. And then I thought I'd try it. So I did it for a couple of hours and it didn't work. But then I drifted off to sleep. I woke up and suddenly my heart started racing. And um, my vision went all blurry and I could see the ceiling coming towards me and I felt like a helium balloon floating towards the ceiling and I nearly had a heart attack. I panicked and I wanted to get back and then when that happened, that scared me so much. I I didn't look into it or try it again until I was about 18 or 19. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I'd left school and I had some free time and I thought, right, I'm going to overcome this fear of it now and uh, I'm just going to master it. And then for the next two years then, um, I mastered it, and then every night and every morning, I used to go out body and, you know, experience uh, a lot of things. Yeah, so you would be kind of flying outside your house and going over the town, I suppose, and meeting strange, strange beings. Yeah, well, sometimes I, I would be in my room and I would see myself lying down in my bed, and like the thought was like, "Who's that in my bed?" I didn't. It didn't, you know, it didn't cross my mind that it was me. So I would do like, I'd go flying over over places. Uh, but the majority of times I was in strange places or speaking to strange beings that I'd never seen before. So, you know, like they, they to me, they were alien beings and I was on different planets or sometimes on ships or sometimes they were humans. Like I had the spirit guide. Who, who looked very human and who used to show me things that were going to happen in the future. And the majority of times these things would happen. Yeah. I'm aware that um, listeners, you know, probably folks who are into the new age will totally believe what you're saying because a lot of them probably have experienced it themselves. Mm. But I'm aware there could be, some people and probably some Christians who think, you know, such experiences are impossible or fake. So what would you say to, to folks that, you know, just think that's just nonsense? Well, I, you know, I've had a lot of people say that to me in the, in the past years. But at the time when I was doing it, I knew the difference between um, a dream and an out-of-body experience because, like, Obviously, every every day in my life, I I'd obviously had dreams, really realistic ones, but there was something unique about an out-of-body experience that you know that would happen. Um, for instance, before you get an out-of-body experience, you'd feel something like a spinning 360 um, or, um, what's the word? You'd, you'd vibrate so hard, it would feel like you'd be electrocuted. And then suddenly, you'd feel yourself um, fly out of your body in such a force that you know something supernatural was happening. It wasn't just a dream. Like um, it, it, it's really strange. You can't really put it into words until you've actually experienced it. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's so bizarre. But when you're out of body, you could see more color and you could feel you could feel more emotion. Uh, it's more vivid and. Uh, the things you see are really detailed, it, and, and you're conscious of it as well. You're walking around thinking like you are in real life. It, it's it's not a dream where everything's really uncontrollable and it's like you're really drunk or things just take control. It's it's you are 100% lucid in control of what's happening. Yeah, and I think as well, what I've heard time and time again, people who have done that and then something really frightens happened and they've realized they don't want to do it anymore mm. when when people if they turn 
and call in the name of Jesus, you know, those beings disappear. Mm -hmm. And I think that just, you know, it's another evidence that, that it's a real experience and, and not just a dream. Yeah. So w when you were doing this, this obviously would, would give you more of a hunger to um, discover more and to learn more. So So what did you get into then? Um, well, when when I was doing out body experience, body experiences, I was contacting so many beings and going to strange places. Um, like, couldn't really get a grasp of a, a solid foundation for my beliefs. Like, different beings would say different things, and I'd go to different places. But I, I needed something more concrete, so um, I decided to do art in my waking life. Which um, uh, certain events happened over the. The next few years, uh, I got involved in ghost hunting, which uh, I met Richard Felix from Most Haunted. Uh -huh. and I went around, uh, Margham Castle was uh, the biggest one I went to, uh, which is in Port Albert. Um, I went around with uh, my brother doing a, a ghost hunt in that place with um, a ghost hunting group, and Richard Felix was there. I met him again after that, but... Um, it's quite strange, really, because when he was filming me, he saw loads of orbs, like, spiralling around me. And um, when we were walking around the castle, I went into this room on my own, and it had no windows or doors. It was just, like, a stone room, and it had... It was quite dark, and there was no one in there. It was just a plain table and a chair in there. And when the chair flipped over, I, I just left, because, uh, you know, it is quite scary when you see something like that. Yeah. So um, I went back and told my brother. And, yeah, the, they did, like, a, a big seance here as well, like, around the table. Mm -hmm. But nothing much happened apart from people feeling, like, goosebumps and things touching them and, and whatever. But, um, yeah, I, I only went a few times. I didn't really get stuck in into the ghost hunting thing. I just wanted to experience it. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> after that... I got involved with a lot of spirit groups online, like um, MSN groups at the time, were offering psychic readings, uh, tarot cards, uh, and, and those people who own these groups, you know, they were they were doing out of body experiences at the time and dealing with like psychic phenomena and such. But there's one I got involved with specifically, which involved a good friend of mine. We were in it together, and there, there was a couple, you know, there was about two or three girls who, who owned this MSN chat room, and it was like a closed group. They would only give readings to the members, and, you know, I felt like I was a part of, like, something special, and yeah. uh, they used to give me readings constantly. And they used to talk of, um, they had uh, spirit guides that were, like, dragons, and it, it's weird because I, I suddenly got, like, an obsession with dragons mm -hmm. like that's all I dreamt about um, I bought statues of dragons and they told me I had a, a dragon spirit guy that sat on my shoulder and things started to go really weird after a certain amount of weeks and I, I first got my yeah I got a demon attack which I've never experienced demons before and I didn't really believe in them until uh, one day I felt this really evil presence in my room that would not leave and it was it was beyond weird i couldn't describe how bad it felt it was um it, it was just vile the the feeling in my stomach the sicky feeling was just beyond words and like it was there for like i don't know about a week or two uh -huh. um, i would leave my room and i have to go to sleep downstairs because as soon as i'd walk through the door of my room i would feel that instant sicky feeling and the atmosphere was so thick like you cut over the knife and I don't know I got a bad feeling about this group because I was experiencing demonic attacks and uh, obviously I wasn't experienced enough to deal with that kind of thing so um, the group started getting really paranoid about me they thought I was a spy and I was like this is getting really odd I, I don't know what's going on and there seems to be a lot of paranoia um, I just left I thought this is getting a bit too uh, crazy for me so yeah. I, left. And, um, I managed to get rid of the presence by doing a lot of like new age stuff, visual, you know, visualizing stuff. And it went away eventually, and I took a big break from anything spiritual. I, I just thought, you know, this is too much for me at the moment. I can't deal with it. Yeah. 
So then um, I, I just, after that, I, I just got into just reading uh, reading stuff about, I, yeah, actually I got into conspiracy theories after that. Can I ask you something, Nathan, before you go into that? Yeah. Um, just, you know, listening to what you've shared, it, it, it's come to my mind that perhaps, you know, in the past when you had met with spirit guides and, and these so-called aliens, you, you didn't feel they were particularly evil, evil but the kind of dragon spirit guides mm. obviously felt more evil. So, you know, looking back on it now, would you say that perhaps it was because they were um, a more, when I say more, more demonic, obviously they're all demons, mm. but of a more, you know, the Bible talks about different principalities and powers. Yeah. They were perhaps more satanic than, than the previous ones. Yeah, well, at the time I, I didn't really... I, I wasn't a Bible believer or, or anything. I wasn't religious or I didn't believe in demons. Like I, I just knew they were spirits and they weren't they were contacting me. But the other the other spirits I'd been in contact with, they were more they appeared to be human or alien. But these spirit guides that were apparently dragons, I kind of had a suspicion about them. Um they they were just telling me, you know, they were good dragons, they were like there for protection. I had um, a big poster on my wall. It was a big dragon. And everything just seemed to get really out of hand with it. So I just kind of, like, walked away from it because I didn't really have the discernment of what the spirits were, what the involvement was with me. I, I wasn't sure. So yeah. I just took a big break from it all. Yeah. And so then you, you started reading on conspiracy theories? Yeah. I, I had seen um, a program... I think it was on BBC One, I think. It was about the 10 craziest conspiracy theories in the world. And most of them I, I kind of knew anyway, like uh, the moon landing and all. But the one that struck me the most was, number one was uh, David Icke's theory about reptilians and the royal family, which uh, it just blew my mind because I'd never even heard anything about it. But the more I read into the reptilian alien thing, the more I could see connections uh, with what people I knew were experiencing about um, blacking out and growing fans and stuff, which is like, I, I just thought they were joking at the time. But now looking back on it, I could see the relationship between what I was researching now and what people were going through. So I, it kind of made me realize there's something evil about that's deceiving people. And at the time, I, I really couldn't put the dots together and work out what was actually going on. So, you know, I obviously, uh, further on in my journey, then I'd start connecting dots and find out what was really going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And eventually you began to realise that a lot of the conspiracy theories were lies, that, that spirit guides were obviously deceiving people into believing. Yeah, well, the the whole conspiracy uh, subject is is a really is a really big subject. There's there's a lot to it, but it, you know, there's there's something going on behind the scenes which uh, I write about in my book. That's that's what my book is about is about all this massive conspiracy and the end time deception and everything I've learned in my journey to you know connect the dots for me and reveal to me what was really going on. Yeah. And was it around this time, um, I noticed you had said you, you obviously believed the, the New Age teachings, and, and one of those teachings was, obviously these teachings came from spirit guides, and mm. um, they would teach people that the planet needs to be cleansed of negative energies, mm -hmm. and to do this, all of the Christians will have to be killed by aliens or by spirit guides and that the Christians will obviously you know they think Jesus is coming for them in a rapture but mm -hmm. actually they're all going to be killed did you believe that at the time or did you think that was a bit suspicious um well at the time I was I, I was talking to spirits but they, they were appearing as aliens to me 
And they were telling me, you know, I'd been incarnated on this earth to to spread the message about uh, the spirit realm and this this whole new age religion and that we need to increase our vibration so you know we could all spiritually evolve into these higher beings and that um the there would be certain religions on this on this earth that, that are very primitive that can't grasp the spiritual aspect of this the shift that's going to take place on this earth uh in the future or at the future or at the, at the time they were saying it would happen in 2012 but um yeah they, they said that like christians and like other religions we're we're holding back this evolution mm-hmm. this spiritual awakening that was happening on, on this world yeah i remember when i was a spiritualist i was taught mm-hmm. that as well you know um the alice bailey and helena blavatsky teachings were quite quite popular then and a, a recent guest alicia she said on the show she was taught that as well and mm. i suppose now looking back on it to think that spirits told us all the christians or all the primitive religions will be killed yeah you know and, and we just believe that is quite <laughs> naive of us but mm. obviously we thought it was true so tell mm. us a little more the, the whole 2012 shift thing and well, when the, yeah, I I I started getting um, prophetic dreams, and I, I for months I kept getting out body experiences and dreams about tsunamis, and suddenly the 2004 Asian tsunami hit, and it just kind of was really weird that I'd been dreaming about this and that happened, and then I didn't get them anymore after that, but. Then I start getting ones about alien invasions, like, um, but not real alien invasions, like fake ones, like they were staged by the government. Like yeah. in the dreams, I would see holographic projections in the sky of UFOs coming down and buildings blowing up that were the government doing. And I and like everyone was running around panicking, and I was running around telling everyone, "No, this is not real. Don't believe it. It's you know, it's an illusion." Um, I, I got those for a very long time, but then uh, I started getting into um, psychedelics then because obviously I've been researching you know, shamans and uh, ancient civilizations and their use with psychedelics. So I wanted to get further into the spirit realm and, and get deeper in contact more spirits to get more knowledge. So I went through a little period of taking psychedelics for experimentation and, and getting deeper into the spirit world but then one day well i'd stopped doing that because i got an experience that scared me so much i never touched it but um a few months after that i had an experience with an alien being that really shook uh, the foundation of my beliefs about them uh-huh. uh, one night i was sleeping and i woke up about i'd say about half three four o'clock and uh I went to go back to sleep, and as I was drifting off, I got this really clear vision in my head of a UFO above my house and a really loud voice in my head saying, can we come in? And I answered in my head, yes. And then suddenly, I had this really horrible experience of being paralyzed, and it was like I was plugged into a a big mains. I was being electrocuted so hard that I was shaking, and it was so painful I had to shout out, you know, stop, please stop, whatever this is, just please stop. And I saw a, a, like a shadow in my room of, of a, like a grey alien with a big head. And it just looked at me really like with no emotion whatsoever. Uh-huh. And when that happened, I thought there's something really bad about what I'm into and I don't know what it is. I just got the impression that they they weren't telling me the whole truth about them and what they wanted so at that point I, I just thought right I'm, I'm just going to stay away from this now because uh, I'm getting myself into into big trouble here and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah I, I think you know I remember myself when I was a spiritualist I used to have a lot of dreams about aliens and they were always horrible dreams even though I believed aliens were good yeah. so at the time it used to confuse me as to why uh, yeah. The dreams were so bad. 
Yeah. So, so what happened next? Well, I I went through another period of just, you know, taking it easy, not getting into anything spiritual, but um, they, they still visited me in the dreams. I couldn't stop it. They still kept coming to me, and I still found myself out of body in ships. Like, it's like they were kidnapping me, or uh, they still came to me telling me that you still got to spread this message. Um, you know, at the time, I thought there was good guys and bad guys in the alien scene, and I, I just started wondering, why Why do they always come to me in spirit form? Why don't they come physically? Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. uh, they show themselves in the air as these, like, really bright orbs, mm-hmm. and they do these fantastic maneuvers. And then I would just question, like, why Why are they up there dancing? Why don't they just come down and show me themselves? Why don't they come pick me up? Why... Why are they always coming to me as, like, spirit beings or spiritual phenomena in the sky? Like, it just started playing in my mind. Why Why isn't this a physical thing? Why is it all spiritual? So, um, yeah, there, there was just a lot of things going on in my mind that I just, I just could not grasp. And at, at this point, I'd start getting uh, what's known as ascension symptoms, which involved extreme migraines, uh, constant nosebleeds every morning heart palpitations, vertigo, big head pressures, sinus problems, and like your heart being squeezed, like you can't breathe. And uh, at the time, these beings were just telling me that it's because your your spirit is vibrating so fast, you're, you're going to be shifted into another dimension, and you're going to be shedding this, uh, this body and leaving it behind. And the, the body can't cope with this uh, spiritual shift. So then they were saying, well, you know, you're getting ill and you're getting migraines because your body can't hack this vibrational change that you're going through. So I, I just, you know, I just believed them. And then I suffered with those until, you know, last year I had those like nearly every day for, for years and years. It was, uh, it was, it was horrible. And then, you know, after 2012 came and went and nothing happened, I just started questioning everything. Then I thought, well, surely if I'm experiencing all these bad symptoms, then, you know, things should be getting better. Do you know what I mean? But they never, they just got worse. Yeah, yeah. I remember that time. I remember the whole um, leading up to 2012 and, and yeah. New Agers Worldwide talking about this shift that was coming. And obviously by then I, I was a Christian and I remembered that type of teaching, but I was aware that what was happening was that, that actually there was more antichrist activity going on, yeah. um, and and that's really what was happening with 2012, and the you know the new agers were being deceived into thinking it was um, we were all going to evolve, and as you say, obviously they didn't all evolve, and the spirits had been lying. Yeah. Well, I, I'd been reading a, a series of books from Dolores Cannon. She was a, a hypnotist, and she used to speak to other spirits and to the people's subconscious. And, you know, she had, I think I had about 10 books of his. And I, I just started really figuring out that these spirits are not, they're not telling the truth because every every chapter was a different session. And she'd have, like, one book specially on, uh, the coming shift, and the, each each story that came from a different spirit was completely different and conflicting the other stories. And I thought, well, if if there's one thing that's going to happen, shouldn't all the spirits agree on the same thing? But yet there was so there were so many stories that conflicted with each other. I thought, well, it, it's like there's a mass confusion in the spirit realm where no one knows what's going to happen, and like maybe this will happen. Uh, maybe that will happen. It was just full of maybes. And it was like, well, you know, what's the deal? What What's going on? You know, we're all listening to all these spirits saying different things, but yet we can't seem to find a solid foundation of what's going to happen. Yeah, totally. I understand that. Um, yeah, my head was just a mess. I just couldn't figure out what was going on and what was going to happen and why I seemed to be getting worse and my life was getting worse. My symptoms were getting worse. And I, I, I just couldn't function in, in, in reality anymore. I was just I was just completely fatigued and the inception symptoms and just completely 
ruined me. I just, I just couldn't do anything. So, yeah, like all, all the all these things I went through before, just constantly questioning what what the hell's going on here. Do you mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then was this round about the time when you began to realise that it was um, a rather strange coincidence that a lot of New Agers believe in Lucifer? And so do occultists, and so do Freemasons. And was that the way your thinking started to go then? Yeah. Well, um, I, I, I know that I, I just walked away again from all the spiritual stuff, the culture stuff, because it was like it, it just get too much, and I, I just think, well, you know, I need to live life. I, I need to, you know, actually have a good day and feel good. So, um. In between then and when I got saved, I went through a, like a massive just cracking down on research and just trying to figure, connect all the dots and trying to figure all this thing out. And, um, you know, at the time I was doing stuff like go and see crop circles, trying to actually see the evidence of these alien beings and what they're, they're doing in this world. And I was getting involved with like other people who were in the same boat as me. Um, me and famous people like Graham Hancock, Neil Haig. Um, and then I started getting into like ancient civilization researchers because what was happening now, I, I had noticed that it was happened before in the past, like in our, right at the start of our civilization uh, with the Mayans and the Egyptians, everything seemed to point back right at the start. So I thought, well, if I want to figure out what's going on today, I would need to figure out what was happening right at the start of our history because, you know, there seems to be a link between the two. Yeah. So I I got a lot of Graham Hancock books reading about, like, the Mayans and Egyptians. I read a lot of uh, Mayan calendar books trying to work out, you know, what was going to happen and when it was going to happen. I, I don't know. I, I, just, I just read, like, hundreds and hundreds of books trying to figure it all out. But I think it was the time when... I started realizing when I was researching Freemasonry and all the secret societies that went back to the ancient world that they 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 were all uh, doing rituals, satanic rituals, contacting demon spirits, and at the time I thought they were ancient aliens that came in our past and gave us this great uh, knowledge, advanced knowledge, but then. I'd come to the realization that these alien beings weren't physical. They were spiritual beings. And these people um, in the past were doing rituals. Like I start thinking, why, why would the Mayans start doing blood sacrifices mm-hmm. and, and demonic satanic rituals to aliens? What, what's the connection between aliens and satanic rituals? <laughs> that the secret society to do it. I was like, it just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And when I come to the realization that these spirits that I'd been contacting through my life were actually demons deceiving me into a new age deception, that's when it all clicked for me because then I could tie in the ancient civilizations with what's happening in the world today and the great deception that's coming on the world in the near future was the exact same deception that happened. Um, in the ancient world with these these spirit beings, you know, that deceive the world. So when I made that connection, that's when I started to um, start walking towards Christianity then. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing how you tied all that together and it just emphasises, you know, many Christians will say the new age isn't new age, it's ancient teachings just... Yeah repackaged it's demonic um spirits um contacting people giving them false information really to keep them away from jesus christ yeah well in 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 this time i was figuring all this out i i had seen something really odd that i just couldn't figure out at the time a, a year previously i had seen um people close people that i knew starting to develop what looked like at the time multiple personality disorder because um, they, they would start arguing with me and attacking me, but yet they didn't seem like the same person. I, I was just thinking, why, why, why am I attracting all these people that have multiple personality disorder 
and they changed right in front of my face to someone that I knew very well to someone that I had no idea who it was. They'd just change. And then they'd say certain things to me, like attack me and say really nasty things and then suddenly snap out of it. And I'm like, what was all that about? And they'd just say, what do you mean? Well, you just said this and this to me. No, I didn't. They, they couldn't remember what they just said to me. And then I was getting really confused because I was like, what, what's going on? Why... Why are these people changing into different people and saying all this stuff to me? Mm-hmm. And then later on, I realized that um, these spirits that were um, that I'd been contacting were, were, were coming through people rather than directly to me. Yeah. So I started to realize then that even though I was speaking to different people, it was the same spirit behind them that was attacking me. And when I realized that, I thought, well, this... This actually doesn't seem like a multiple personality disorder anymore. It, it's almost like it's a demon manifestation in people. And then when, when, I, when I start to realize that, I thought, well, now that I've realized what these spirits are, the demons, they're attacking me through people I know closely. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what happened after that is I started experiencing some, some really extreme things. Um, you know, I went through a stage of just getting massive paranoia about friends and family. And I'd get these little visions that they were conspiring against me, that they were talking behind my back and planning things against me. And then I was having these mental battles. Um, it, it was like it was in my head. Like the battle I was having was I was battling another personality inside my head. Yeah. And honestly, it felt... If I didn't win this mental battle in my head, that I would lose my life. I, I would either die or be completely taken over by the sting that was inside of me. And, you know, in the nighttime, I was waking up in, in sweat, just drenched. And it was like I was battling all through the night and all through the day, and I just could not get a break. Um, I, I felt like I was going insane. I, I felt like I was losing my mind. All this stuff I'd ever been through in my life with all the supernatural it, it was just taking a toll on me in there. And for some reason, because I was coming to the truth of what they were and what was happening in the world, it's almost like these spirits that I'd let in all these years and the, all the ones that are around me were just, they just took a full assault on me. And it was, it was like either life or death at the time. That's how it felt. Yeah. So, and uh, Sorry for interrupting, but we're um, going to mo- lose out of time soon. But I totally understand what you're going through Nathan because my own mother went through that uh, yeah. you know she was a medium and also she did actually kill herself because of it but just so many hundreds of other people I've heard from who say the same thing once they try to leave that lifestyle the spirits all turned against them and yeah. try to make them yeah. mad or or kill them so moving on a wee bit more quickly now Basically, this was around about the time when when you 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 came to Jesus Christ. I did. I, I'd lost all hope in my own power and my own um, my own path and what I was trying to achieve. I, I just thought I, I just can't do it. There's just this power that's against me that is just too much for me. So I just thought the only person in history was that defeated the devil and demons was Jesus Christ. So I just laid everything down and just came to him and then. Um, in that instant I did that, I was saved and delivered from all this demonic torment I've had all these years. And I was completely free and delivered. I, I felt like a little child again. I, was, I just felt so pure. And my mind was completely 100% uh, sound. Like there was no negative thoughts. I felt like a pure love and bliss inside of me. And then, you know, that continued for, for months. I just felt the most amazing love and peace that I'd ever felt in my life. That's awesome. And it's just wonderful. It's so amazing. Um, you know, that even in itself shows that it wasn't just mental illness you were going through because, you know, the very moment you cry out to Jesus Christ, your 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 life is just transformed. Your mind is just transformed. And, yeah. and you said it was, you had three days of going through deliverance. And yeah. Yeah, all I, those I, demons, all those demons left. Yeah, I mean, all my life I'd suffered from um, depression and uh, 
and stuff. And then, like, literally after I got saved, it was like it just, like, instantly just vanished. And I've never had it since. It just, it was just complete freedom. And, and it was in an instant. As soon as I came to Jesus, it was, it was just an instant change. And I feel, I felt like I was just a completely different person. It's wonderful. It's, it's really quite miraculous. Yeah. And the change that Jesus has brought in your life, it's just so powerful. Could, could you advise anyone who's listening, Nathan, who is maybe involved in the new, the new age or old cult, what would you say to them today? Um, I, I would say have a massive think of what you're getting into um, because, you know, you know, right now it could seem, you know, fun and mysterious. And, you know, it, it is, the new age is powerful. It does work. Um, that's what deceives a lot of people because they're, finally experiencing something that actually works in their life. But um, later on down the road, it's, it's, it's just going to engulf you and overtake you. And you're not going to be powerful enough to, uh, to battle this thing. And then inevitably you, you, you're going to have to either buckle under the pressure or, you know, come to Jesus and, and get saved and then be delivered of all this, this crap that you've gained through all this occult stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, could you could you tell the listeners your YouTube channel, please? Because some people might want to go on there and watch your testimony again. Yeah, sure. Um, my YouTube channel is under my name, Nathan Colella, which is spelled C O L E L L A, and then there you'll find uh, my testimony, uh, my story, and everything I've learned up to this point in Christianity. And if you want to read my book, it's free of charge. Uh, you can either message me on YouTube and give me an email, or you can join my group on Facebook, which is The Red Pill, where you can download free from the file section. And, and also, I've not read your book yet, but, but in your book you, you say... Um, you go on to explain the New Age agenda and how it relates to biblical prophecies of last day's deception. So really it's important people, you know, know these things so they don't get deceived or, or tempted into these things. Yeah, exactly. It, it's all about the coming deception and the New Age deception involving aliens and the secret societies and what they're pushing on the public right now with uh, all the stuff you know, with the aliens, and the, the occult, the supernatural. It, it's all tying it all together into into a conclusion of uh, the end time deception. Yeah, and the one world, the one world uh, government, one world banking system, all of that stuff as well. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Well, well it's a really wonderful um, testimony, Nathan. Thanks so much for, for telling us all these things today. Could you finish, please, by praying for the listeners as you feel led to? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thanks so much. Father, I ask that you may bless everyone listening and that you enter their hearts and fill them with your spirit. Please show them the truth about who you are and that all the new age occult practices of doctrines of demons. If there's any unbelievers listening, I pray that you think twice about dabbling into the occult and come to Jesus to be cleansed of your sins and given eternal life with him and the Father, to be given a new heart of flesh and a new spirit so you can be a blessing to the lost, displaying the Father's eternal grace, love and compassion to the brokenhearted. Lord, I thank you for the protection and guidance through my journey and the continuing mercy and grace. Show me all the deceptions to keep me from the enemy. So I can reveal it to others. Peace be unto you all. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Nathan. Very welcome. I, I hope you were all encouraged today by Nathan's story and, and how that really Jesus Christ literally saved his life. Please tune in again next time for another powerful testimony. Thank you and God bless you. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio.
That a preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. <laughs> <laughs>